morning. My name is Zach, one of the pastors here at the Response Church. I'm going to preach from Daniel chapter 4, starting at verse 34. Word of the Lord, which you will be held accountable for hearing today, it says this, At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my reason returned to me. And I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing. And he does according to his will among the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say to him, what have you done? This is the word of the Lord. At the end of the day, the reality is we are dust. You're going to return to dust. You're going to return to dust. Every doctor in here is going to return to dust. I'm going to return to dust. But the everlasting king, who has lived forever eternally and will eternally live, will remain the steadfast king of glory over us. He cannot be mocked. His word cannot be reviled. Apathy is a sin when you know you should be doing other than what you're doing. Do you see the foolishness of this? He has no response to anything we say. And by your gentleman's silence, neither do you. We are open to debate. I'll put the mic down and I'll sit here and debate. If he wants to come down, we can debate and have an intellectual conversation. The same intellect that tells him he should stop at stop signs and red lights, which he obeys, he completely forfeits once it becomes something morally that he does not want to submit to. Once it becomes something that affects his conscience and tells him this is wrong, he has two options. He either repents of it or he plays farting noises because that's the best defense he has. Loud music, just cursing at us. Do you see the absolute folly of this it's it's utterly shameful I mean no one could possibly be proud of this kind of behavior and he knows it which is why he just keeps resorting to it he knows he's deep in a hole he's forfeited any honor he's forfeited any bit of conscience that is left in him that tells him that his actions are shameful and repulsive. And so he just continues on like a two-year-old throwing a tantrum with no, no intellectual argument whatsoever. No respect. Not willing to engage with anything we say. And yet, your silence as security guards is not better. You might think it is better, but it's not. This is what your argument sounds like. I mean, I'll grab coffee on a Wednesday. I'll have you over for dinner on a Thursday. We can talk over a table. We don't need to talk right here. But you guys are being fools. You're security guards. You're supposed to protect people, not protect those who kill people. There were security guards outside concentration camps as babies and children and adults were slaughtered. Do you think those security guards are doing well now? Or do you think they're under the all white hot wrath of God for protecting murderers? If someone murdered your family, do you want someone to protect the murderer? Or do you want the murderer to face proper penalty? These people do not deserve your protection. The everlasting God will bring justice to every person, myself included. 
You don't need to go in there, ma'am. Every person will be under his just judgments. And as Pastor Sean faithfully preached, there is one name under heaven by which man can be saved. It's not through good works. It's not that you're not going to be saved through quitting your job. I'm not saved through preaching here. I don't come here to earn anything from God. I come here because God has made me in his image and we inherently know that life should be protected and murderers should not be protected. And yet here we are. Please, baby, you don't need to go in there. You have to go yeah, in there, man. Please talk to us. Just talk to us for like five minutes. You don't need to go in there. Please. I'll turn the mic off and we can just talk. Do you guys understand the insanity of what's happening? Babies are being slaughtered. Slaughtered. Vacuumed to pieces. Imagine if I had a vacuum strong enough to rip a person, an adult, right here to pieces. Would you step in? Would you shoot me in the face? Because I hope so. I hope if I had a vacuum and I was tearing the limbs off an adult right here, you would shoot me as many times as it took to get me to stop. And you won't even quit your job. That's what's happening in here. You don't need to work here. Doctors and nurses, you don't need to work here. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing. As nothing. All the inhabitants. You don't care about somebody stopping in the street but you're encouraging and protecting the one who's being murdered. Think about that. All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing. Nothing. We are all dust. Dust, though, created in the image of the triune God. Dust with a more value than you could ever fathom, which is why we're here on our Saturday morning trying to preserve the life in wombs, trying to care for women and have them not be murderers, trying to call doctors to repentance that they might not be murderers, trying to call you security guards to repentance that you might not defend murderers, trying to call the nurses to repentance that they might, as they inherently know that there is value in us, because we are not merely dust, though we are dust, and to dust we shall return, we are also made in the image of the triune God. And we will, therefore, be held accountable for all our decisions. We fundamentally know we are to protect life, to preserve life, to foster life, to give life, to create new life. And if you just go about your day, pridefully thinking that there will be no accountability and you are foolish King Nebuchadnezzar was king over all the land more powerful than our presidents he was one of the most powerful kings on the earth and God made him like an ox of the field like an animal eating from the ground from the grass 
stripped him of his kingship, stripped him, stripped him of even his personhood. As he will strip us, he will return us all to dust. And we will immediately in spirit be before him and be held accountable. You do not want to stand before him, not having repented of your sins and trusted upon the Lord Jesus Christ. All sin can be forgiven by faith in the Son of God. The Son of God who really did take on flesh. Really did dwell among us. He lived perfectly in your place and in your place and in all of our places that whosoever would place their faith in him would not be condemned, would be, would, which would rather be saved. Eternally given life. Forgiveness is being preached to you again. Another day. And all the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing. Your life can be stripped from you on your way home. You could die of a heart attack right now. You do not want to stand before God doing what you're doing. Mortality is at 100%. You will die. And you might fancy yourself with the delusion that it's nothing. Nothing's going to happen. You're not going to stand before God. Some other intellectually ridiculous alternative. You'll be turned into an animal or something stupid. You're just going to become merely dust. There'll be no more existence. And all of those are lies. You will stand before God upon your physical death immediately. And he will ask you what you did with every minute of your life. Every thought you've ever had was to bring God glory. Did you put other gods before the one true God? Did you worship with God and his people? Did you have murderous and hateful thoughts? Did you protect murderers? Did you literally murder? Did you stand as a nurse alongside doctors murdering? Please, sir. Please, sir, talk to us. Don't be a coward. Talk to us. Don't be a coward. Come talk to us. We're asking for a conversation. I don't know why everyone here is such a coward. It's, it's insane. It's because you have no arguments whatsoever. None of them have arguments whatsoever. They know what they're doing, but the money matters more. The greed matters more. They don't want to be held accountable. They think they're too deep in sin to repent of it. They don't want to admit that what they're doing is as heinous as they know it inherently is because that means they're going to be held accountable and they don't know what to do with all the sin that they're being drowning in. Drowning in literal blood of children. And they don't know what to do with it. Which is why one of the chief reasons we're here is not just to call the sin out, but to tell them what to do with it. To place all the blood upon Jesus Christ. Will you talk to me, ma'am? You have please? to support this place, ma'am. Will you talk to me, please? Don't be complicit with murder. Will you, will you talk to me, ma'am, please? Five minutes. Last time I was here, I was offering a hundred bucks per five minutes to talk to me, and no one even took me up on it. That's insane. Who doesn't take you up on that? It's because they know what they're doing is evil. They know it, and they don't want to be confronted with that. Just like anyone who gets caught in a sin, they try and run from it, they lie about it, they do whatever they can not to face it. The beauty is, we're telling you that you don't have to face it alone, you can put it all upon Christ. And you don't need to live the way you do anymore. All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing. 
Nothing. We're just dust. Not merely dust. We are made in the image of the triune God. But if we pridefully think that we're going to somehow escape God's judgments, we are utterly foolish. We're fools. We don't even have an argument against sinful man, me. You don't even have an argument to talk to just another guy. I'm just dust too. You're probably smarter than I am. What do you think you're going to do when you stand before God? Please talk to us, ma'am. Ma would you please talk to us? I'll drop the mic, ma'am. We can just talk. Please don't support please, this place. Please, you don't need to go in here. There's alternative places to go. Ma'am, please talk to us. Please, please, five minutes, ma'am. They just make it as convenient as they can. Automatic doors, escorts, security guards got a well-oiled murder factory here right in downtown in the eighth largest city in the country this is what this is our situation please talk to us please please if you, you can pull into that spot and talk to us for just a few minutes tears in her eyes did you see that tears in her eyes why do you think she had tears in her eyes? Why do you think she had tears in her eyes? Why did she have tears in her eyes? You think it's because inherently she knows she just slaughtered her own child and her conscience is in torment. She knows what she just did. And you know what? Instead of talking to us and receiving the grace of Jesus Christ, full pardon, full forgiveness, she's going to drive away. Because people like you stand here and defend it. Nurses stand here and defend it. And so they think, this must be my only option. To kill my child and drive away in tears, knowing forever that I killed my child. And I'll, over time, I'll suppress the reality that I killed her. I'll try and talk about it other ways. I'll try and talk about how someday I'll redeem the death of killing my first child by having another one when I'm ready. We're, we're happy to adopt any child that comes through here. Any child. Full expenses paid. All they need to do is carry the child that they chose to have through having sex to term. We'll pay for it. We'll pay for the child and we'll raise the child. Lovingly and caringly, they will thrive. Is that that much to ask? The, the only other option is to murder the child for money. All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing. You will not escape being before him. I'm sure you guys know people who died rather in a flash. They were here, and now they're not. You too, likewise, will perish. I will perish. And the only difference between you guys and me, because we're both sinners, is that my sin, by faith, I am trusting God in His Word that His Son has paid for it. And in my response to his son having paid for my sin, I seek to now live no longer in sin, but in accordance with what he has called me to. To actually love people. Not with whatever, def how, whatever definition I want to decide of what love is. Love is not murdering people, therefore I don't murder people. Love is not coveting all my neighbor's goods. It's not looking at my neighbor and thinking I want his wife, I want his cars, and I'm going to even steal when he goes on vacation, whatever I can from his house, and then lie about it. Love is not doing that, so I seek to not do that. Boss, you don't need to deliver that. I'll buy it off you right now. I'll seriously buy that off you right now. Tell me what the price is. I'll up it 20 bucks. I'll up it 20 bucks. Do you want a $20 tip or no? You don't want a twenty dollar tip? Why wouldn't you want a twenty dollar tip? I know, and I'm saying I would have bought it off you and given you twenty bucks. 
Yeah, you don't yeah, need to no, deliver it here. Tell him you don't want to deliver food to the to the murderer. Don't 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 feed Hitler. Hey, next time you get a delivery, you say who's gonna pay me twenty bucks more, alright, and I'll raise my hand. It's crazy. You know how many eating companies there are? If he, if he fears losing his job, like he just picks another one. Is there that much to lose? There's only there's twenty dollars to gain. In that twenty bucks, he can apply for another eating delivery service and get the job. And all that so that he doesn't need to defend murdering children. Those who are most innocent. Most vulnerable. Who is more vulnerable than a, a child in a womb? Should they not be protected more than anyone else? They can't stick their arms out to, to protect themselves. They can't cry, I can't breathe. They can't do anything to protect themselves. You need to protect them and we need to protect them. And yet what we do is propagate their slaughter. And all the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing. We are fools if we're thinking that we can just defend places like this, work for places like this, deliver things to places like this, and get away with it. If you think that you're going to be able to say, well, I thought I was doing a good thing, you're being warned. You're warned here every Saturday that it's not. With clear arguments and crickets in response. Besides the occasional farting noises and FUs, nobody gives us any other arguments. Have a good day. At least you can't say it's just a bunch of young bucks who are riled up about something. You want to argue with her? She'll probably take you to the mat. You should be ashamed of yourself. You don't need to do this, man. Can you talk? Or I mean, I'll put down the mic. Can you talk right now or no? Preservation of your job. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? <coughs> what is this? What What do you What in your mind do you think you're doing right now? <coughs> do you want me to bring the nice? Old lady come here to ask you, will you respond to her? <coughs> I'm not trying to be disrespectful, I'm literally trying to help you. You don't need to do this, man. You know how great of a statement it will be if you say, yeah, I'm, I can't defend, I'm literally a guard. I'm supposed to defend life, not defend murderers. 
It's as fundamental to the job as you possibly could. It's an honorable job. <coughs> what, what do you think you're doing? I just want to know from your perspective what you think you're doing. Have a good evening. Do you realize <laughs> whose who's side you're on here? Literally? I mean, this, this should be like absolutely, utterly embarrassing to you. Behind you, you have doctors killing children, and then you have this guy playing farting noises, and that's all the arguments we're hearing. Do you see this? You don't need to live like this. You can, you can be, live in a very honorable state of life. This is who you're defending right now. I mean, what is more embarrassing than this? Is this not embarrassing to you? You have no shame whatsoever. Behind your guys' backs are doctors ripping children out of wombs with literal vacuums, pulling them to pieces, and a guy playing party noises. Is this not embarrassing to you? Like, what, please tell me what you guys think you're doing. Is it just like you're just trying to pay the bills? I'm assuming there's an honorable intent in what you're trying to do. If your mom was about to be killed, would you want me to protect her? Or just stand and defend the murderer? Really simple. Please answer the question. Are you guys not allowed to talk to us? Maybe just give me a no if you're not allowed to even talk to us at all. I know you are because you told me to take my water bottle off a bush, so I know you're allowed to talk to us at some measure. What are you afraid of? There's plenty of other jobs that pay $20 an hour in San Diego. You don't have to defend this place. You don't need to defend this place at all. In fact, I bet there's even other security companies who would be honored to take someone who's not willing to defend this place. All the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing. We're all gonna die. One day, I'm gonna come here, and one of you's not gonna be here, and we're gonna learn that you died. I might die before you, but either way, we both know that that's gonna happen. And what do you think is gonna happen when you stand before the Lord? And you had week in, week out, week in, week out, week in, week out, week in, week out, people pleading with you, begging you to repent of your sin. Nurses, doctors, all of you, begging you to repent of your sin. You don't need to go in there, boss. Hey, will you talk to me? A piece of shit doesn't walk away like a coward. They talk to people. Please talk to me. I'll give you 20 bucks to talk to me for five minutes. God will judge you for murder. Do you see their argument? It's literally laughable. Like, I, it's it's so laughable. That's all they got. Hey, man, you're a piece of shit, man. It's, it's so stupid. They won't even engage for five minutes because they have nothing. This is who you're defending. Nurses and doctors, this is who you welcome as your defense. This is going to be your defense before God, crapping your pants. It's laughable, and God will not be mocked. You don't need to do this. Nurses and doctors, you don't need to do this. You will be turned to dust. You will die, like everyone else, myself included. And you will immediately stand before the living God who preserved your every life. He gave you your every heartbeat, every single one. He grew you up. He preserved you in the womb. He knit you in the womb. He fed you and clothed you. He sent preachers to tell you of the grace of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he sent his son to perish for wicked, 
wicked sinners like you and I, that we might have life. That this would not be our defense, but our defense would be Jesus Christ and Him crucified. You guys should be utterly ashamed of yourself that this is what you're defending. This is your defense. Literally FUs and this. If you have any other defense, I'll buy you coffee right now. We'll talk about it. Any other defense whatsoever. What do you think the defense was when Hitler stood before the Lord? Do you think that went well for him? Do you think it went well for the doctors who performed those things? in the security guards. You despise those people, at least you should. And yet you find yourselves in the same exact situation. And perhaps it was due to ignorance, that's okay. You'll be held accountable before it, but you can be placing it upon Christ. If you found yourself due to ignorance, if you look back and you think, man, looking back, I would have taken another job, then make the change. Any of you in here, Silence. Silence. You got nothing. Cowardly silence. Nothing. The only time you'll talk is when you tell me to take a water bottle off a bush. I mean, it's, I, it's the pinnacle of embarrassment. And I would be there, right there, j just like you, but for the grace of God. The grace of God that was offered to me, and by God's sovereign grace, I accepted it. That's the only difference between me and you. It's not that I'm a better guy. I'm a sinner just like you, willing to defend murderers. But in God's mercy, he granted me eyes to see obvious reality. That slaughtering children, they can slaughter children past 24 weeks here. Just Google on your phone right now. Just Google Stanford, Harvard, Princeton, any of them. Look up them, biology of a 24 week year old and tell me if it's a baby or not. Just Google it right now. Pick any university you want. I'm not telling you to pick mine. Pick anyone you want and say, what does a child do? What do they have physically? At 24 weeks gestation. And what you will see is a fully alive child. I mean, just so obvious. It's incredible. And that's what you're defending. They will be slaughtered here today. Just Google it. When you get home, Google it. I know every temptation in you is going to be to say, I'm not going to look that up. I'm not going to look that up. Because you fear and you know that it's true. And you don't want to be held accountable. But again, you don't need to be held accountable because you can put your sins upon Jesus Christ. You don't need this to be the people you defend. It's, it's, it's insanity. You guys know it. You guys know it. If you didn't know it, you would at least say something. These doctors and nurses, they would hire someone to just come out here and debate us. If they had anything, they have all the money, they would just have someone out here who just debates people who want to make these accusations against them. But they have nothing. They stay in their nice walls, they just stack it with cameras, and they hire guards. Why? Because murder is utterly evil. And they know if they do it out in the open, they themselves will be killed for it. Just as if I were to kill one of your moms right here, I hope that one of you would shoot me as many times as it took to get me to stop. But they won't do it out in the open, never. They fortify this place with as much as they got because they love the darkness, the secrecy just like they love the darkness and secrecy of their leader, Sanger, trying to wipe out 
as many black people as she could. Do you have no pride, brother, that you would defend a place that that's how it started? Do you have no pride? Utterly shameful for the people who broke their backs that you could even be a free man here today. And you're defending a place where the leader wanted to slaughter anyone who looked like you. Do you have no courage to just go in there and say, hey, the reality is the leader of this place wanted to slaughter black people. It's, I mean, quotes in abundance. That's what her intention was. I can't work. I mean, at least do that. If you don't want to say it's because they're killing babies, then at least do that. Anything. It'll be God's common grace upon you that either way, one way or another, though one is better than the other, it's courageous and right to say I'm leaving for both reasons, but at least choose one of them and leave. I'm pleading with you. If you don't think there's other things I want to do on a Saturday morning, I mean, we both know that's false. I could be watching college basketball, eating pancakes, playing with my kids at home. Anything. I'm here literally begging you guys. That's why I'm coming here. I'll, I'll talk to anyone who will talk to me. Ma'am, you don't, don't need to go in there, please. Man. I'll give you 50 bucks to talk to me for five minutes. Five minutes. $50. Why do they turn why do they turn away free cash? Do you see her defense? I mean, she did it behind you, but you can probably guess. She flipped me off. That's her defense. She won't even give me five minutes. If they don't have five minutes of argumentation, then I, I don't know what we're doing here. I could argue their case for five minutes. It's easy. It'd be utterly wrong to do so, but nonetheless, it doesn't take much to argue something for five minutes, even if you're arguing for the wrong position. Yet they won't do it because they inherently know this is wrong, but they want their comfort. They want their convenience for the same reason that a mom or dad murders their five-year-old. They murder their 24 week old. It's the same reasons. God in his grace just preserved the child to five. You don't need to defend this place. I know you guys, I mean, you must have at least an ounce of honor in you to choose another place to defend. Anything. Anywhere else. Ma'am, will you please talk to us? Please, please don't you, support this place. I'll give you $50 to talk to me for five minutes, How please. How evil can you be? Please, ma'am, you don't need to go in there. The evilness of your heart. So heavy because of sin, death entered the world. Will you talk to her? She'll take you to the mat. The world. You guys should be ashamed of yourself. Utterly ashamed. But you don't need to sit in your shame. You don't need to live in your shame forever. You just repent of it. Just like someone who owns up, yeah, I lied. I was wrong. I'm owning up to it. Please forgive me. That's what you can do. Simple as that, you can do it right now, be done. Fully, fully cleansed of all your sin, seeking the Lord for forgiveness because he loves to give it. He sent his son, not for a hypothetical salvation, but to actually pay for the sins of anyone who would place their trust and faith in him. When you die, you talk to your kids. This is what you're going to say, I defended this. How do you even tell your kids to be courageous? To tell your brothers, your friends? How do you tell them to say, hey, we should defend that which is right? If you do, you're an absolute hypocrite. Because this is what you're defending, and this is what you're defending. Just Google 24 weeks gestation. Pick any university you want. I mean, these, these doctors, they studied this. They know what they're doing. And they've just suppressed the truth over and over and over. 
and they've sought to exchange the truth for as many lies as they could to justify their wickedness. Because the paycheck is more important to them. Just like it is for you guys. And protecting the most vulnerable people on the face of the planet. Children who haven't even been born yet. Defending the legacy of Margaret Sanger. I hate that woman because I love guys like you. And you're defending her. And you're defending the people who want to defend her. If you think it's not going to come back to bite you, you're entirely wrong, my friend. It'll come back to bite you in this life and the next. And the next will be immensely, eternally, utterly worse than anything this life ever threw at you. Your absolute worst day on this earth will have been the most wonderful breath of fresh air to your absolute best moment in hell. And you might think, oh, that's extreme, or that's not true. No, we, we have justice systems inherently because we're made in the image of the God of justice. That's why we have them. We didn't just come up with them. They've been here since the beginning of creation. That's why we have guards and people who will hold one another accountable for their actions. We have justice systems because we're made in the image of the triune God, the God of justice. And when you stand before him, he will bring swift justice. And there will be two options. The justice is either upon his son, Jesus Christ, who he freely, lovingly gave you week in and week out through the preached word that you might put your trust in him or his justice will be upon you. And it'll be more wicked and what, I mean, it'll be worse than anything you ever experienced in this life. A lake of fire burning in torment all the days of your life. There will be no family in hell, no friends in hell. You might think, oh, well, there's other people that are going there too. No, you'll utterly hate each other. Loving relationships, kindness are all attributes of God. And in his common grace, he gives them to all mankind for a season. And we decide to either sin all the more with them or to obey him in them. And you and everyone in here is choosing to sin all the more with them. And you can place all of those sins upon Christ or you can suffer under the swift judgment of God that will last for an eternity. Yeah. 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 I'll pray for us. Father, we ask we ask for your mercy upon these people. We ask that you would mercifully grant them repentance even now. Please move in their hearts, Lord. Only you can change the heart of man. Please pierce their consciences with your word. As you have done faithfully throughout all of human history. Do not give them over to their ways and to their wickedness anymore, Lord. Please have mercy upon them that your son might be glorified in the salvation of all the wicked people who represent this organization, who defend this organization. Please, Lord. And if you will not extend your mercy, we ask for swift judgment. If even the people here, Lord, who are gathered to preach and to pray and to make the wickedness of this place known, if even we have to die... From a, from a firestorm upon this place right now, let it be so that the wickedness would end. And that our lives would have died with honor as we defend you and righteousness and these vulnerable children. Even if we must die, Lord, make it so. Remove the evil and the wickedness of this land and cause them all to repent of their sin lest they face you 
eternally and sit under your judgment. Please, Lord, grant them all repentance. They don't have to walk in their sin anymore because you've given us your son. We love you. We thank you for your word, which is a lamp unto our feet. Without it, we would not know which way to go. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.